So last week we explored the Samsung Galaxy Note 20 Ultra's camera, and you guys really seem to enjoy that. And so I wanted to take it a step further and straight up compare it to another camera, specifically the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 6K. And for obvious reasons, that's the last time I'm gonna say both of these cameras full name. So there's a bunch of topics I wanna cover here, so let's jump right into it, talking about resolution. So the Blackmagic Pocket 6K, can shoot at a max 6K resolution, and this guy can shoot at 8K. So sensor size is actually way more important than the actual resolution. Now for the sake of this visual, we're gonna compare three different cameras. Uh, we're gonna be talking about the 108 megapixel sensor, the Pocket 6Ks, and then the RE65. Now what's funny is if we visualize the max resolution that these cameras can shoot at, RE65 actually comes in at the smallest, still at 6K, but just a slightly smaller sensor than the Blackmagic Pocket 6Ks. And then of course you have the uh, Note 20 Ultra's 8K resolution, which is significantly larger. But if we change the visual up to showcase the sensor size, it tells a completely different story. So the RE sensor is literally nine times larger than the phone sensor. Sensor size is of course only one of uh, the pieces to the puzzle here, but it's definitely one to not overlook. Moving along here, we have frame rates. The Note 20 Ultra has a super slow-mo mode, which is essentially the camera shoots at 480 frames per second, which is bonkers in 720p, and then uses digital enhancing to then slow it down even more so to like 940 frames per second. And you only get about a second of record time. And I will say there is one cool feature, which basically brings up a box in the middle of the screen. And then you can choose to only record when motion is detected within that box. Now, meanwhile, on the Pocket 6K, you can go down to 2.8K and film up to 120 frames per second. In terms of quality, like I said, besides just it being some fun thing you show your friends, you are never ever going to be able to use this in a high-end project. But on the Blackmagic, yes, it's lower resolution, 2.8K, but since you're still in B-Raw, uh, you can easily match this to anything else. Next up, we have dynamic range. Like I said in the last video, it definitely kind of optimizes for that super HDR look where um, you have decent shadows if it's a super sunny day, and then you'll still get the nice blue sky with clouds and it's not gonna be super blown out or anything. But with the lack of uh, log capabilities or some sort of flatter profile shooting, you can't really adjust it in post. So the dynamic range is good for a consumer camera, but in terms of shooting, um, for a stylized film that you can adjust in post. It's honestly the biggest disappointment in pro mode for the Note 20 Ultra. Of course, on the Blackmagic, you're shooting in B-RAW. Um, you have technically 13 stops of dynamic range, but it's really like 11 and a half or 12. But it's obviously leaps and bounds better than the phone's dynamic range in terms of what you can do in post. So when you're shooting with the Note 20 Ultra, you just want to nail your exposure as much as you can in camera, knowing that you have very limited wiggle room uh, in post-production. Now, in terms of rolling shutter, I was actually kind of surprised here. I don't know if it's because smaller sensors have less of a rolling shutter effect, but the Blackmagic Pocket 6K, in my opinion, has a really bad rolling shutter. So a category where the Note 20 Ultra wins is it has significantly less rolling shutter. Uh, autofocus, again, if you're a one-man band type of shooter, uh, on the cinema camera, there is no autofocus. Of course, other mirrorless and DSLRs have them, but here it's all manual focus and all the lenses I use are cine lenses. On the phone, you have both options. You have autofocus. I also love the fact that when you are um, doing manual focus, while you're actually changing the focus, it will bring up a green focus peaking line so you can tell what subject is in focus when. And as soon as you take your finger off the screen, the focus peaking lines go away. I thought that was a really nice touch in pro mode. And we talked about log a little bit of go. I decided to test out doing like a makeshift log where if you go down to full HD, you actually get some color exposure settings that you can mess with in pro mode. So I lowered the contrast a little bit and then all the way and also desaturated it slightly trying to see if it would give me any sort of advantage in post for messing with the dynamic range or shadows. 
Um, and to be honest, it did nothing um, since you're going all the way from 8K to HD. The resolution loss was so significant that it just bleh, didn't, that experiment failed. Let's just put it that way. Now when talking about getting things right in camera and lack of latitude for post-processing, I wanna talk about bit depth. So every single phone camera out there shoots in 8-bit and then a lot of mirrorless cameras now are shooting 10-bit and then the Blackmagic Pocket Series and most cinema cameras are shooting 12-bit or up raw video files. Now I know it doesn't sound like a lot, but if you look at this graphic right here, you can see how much more colors you have to work with going from each step up from 8-bit to 10-bit to 12-bit. It's bonkers. So if you are a huge fan of color grading, uh, then a phone camera just, they're not there just yet. So here we have some end of the day low light shots. And so shooting around dusk time, or if you just have a really overcast day, it's kind of the best of all worlds because you know the Note 20 Ultra doesn't have a flat log shooting mode, but overcast basically makes the world flat and log-ish. <laughs> For low light, it does go up to 3200 ISO and it actually handled quite well, especially in some of these clips when it was still dusk, it wasn't complete darkness just yet. Uh, but it was still pretty dark. Uh, this shot, I believe, was at 1600 ISO, and it actually did surprisingly well. I would totally use this shot um, as kind of a cutaway or establishing shot in a project if I had to. So a lot of times with a cinema camera, if you shoot in low light and then you immediately play it back, you're looking at a flat log profile, so it's not pretty colors, not good contrast, and then it's usually really, really noisy even if a camera is good in low light. Now, if you're a good editor, you understand that once you color correct it, you imply some healthy noise reduction, you can clean the image up really nicely and it looks like the image is that we all see for low light uh, scenes. But what every camera, whether it's a DSLR or phone does in all these auto modes, is applies a bunch of denoiser and a bunch of different other enhancements that to a pro's eye just completely makes it look like utter garbage. So for me, I wish in pro mode, again, you could turn off all this post-processing, get a pretty probably noisy image out of this, and then try to clean it up using professional grade software. Um, but I think that's probably hoping for a little too much from a phone manufacturer, but hey, one can dream, right? This also, again, does tap into the first thing we talked about, which is sensor sizes. 8K resolution on that small of a sensor. Every pixel needs so much light in order to get it. So that's also why it's just a lot lower quality and then lower bit rates and everything else. We've started to see all these uh, night modes for photos and iPhones and Androids all pretty much support taking raw photos now, which is great. So it'll be awesome whenever the day comes that true raw video uh, can be shot on a smartphone. Now, once you've shot the footage on all the cameras, of course, the Blackmagic, I love because I shoot right onto an SSD, uh, so I can immediately plug that SSD right in the computer, edit off that if I want to, or of course, transfer it over a simple cable. With this, uh, I gotta say, this is probably a little bit of user error, and I'm sure uh, you can yell at me in the comments, but I could not find a super easy way to transfer everything. Ended up just using like Google Photos and Google Drive. And so I have gigabit internet here, but it still took a little while to upload and then download um, about 20 gigs worth of footage off of here. So that was super annoying. I'm sure if I had like, I don't know, PC, I could plug it in via the USB-C cable, but I couldn't get any sort of physical transfer to work and I didn't want to spend hours trying to do that. But you will have significantly smaller file sizes using uh, the phone's camera rather than the cinema camera, which uh, even right now, I'm at about 35 minutes or so of talking to this camera, and that's probably gonna be around 350 gigs. Whereas the other day when I shot my 30 minutes of A-roll using this 8K24, uh, it was 23 gigs. So this phone truly, I think, is beyond a gimmick. If you are trying to shoot any projects on this or this is your main camera because it's your main phone, my biggest piece of advice after using it uh, for a while now is to just make sure you get your proper exposure and the proper style that you want in camera because you do not have a lot of latitude working on it in post in terms of color grading and exposure fixes. 
But if you get it right in camera and you use different techniques like using ND filters so you can have a proper shutter speed, it's going to give you an image that could fool people into thinking you shot it on a bunch bigger camera. So kudos to Samsung for making a killer phone and a killer camera inside of a phone. Again, if you're listening, if you can be the first to make raw video and quit all the post-processing and please create some sort of flat log profile in pro mode, I will be extremely happy. So if you guys learned anything in this video and are happy with the results, hit that like button. It helps me out a ton and lets me know that I actually trying to bring value to you guys. Let me know down in the comments below what your final thoughts are on the Note 20 Ultra or it compared to the Pocket 6K. And for now, I'll see you in the next video.